Getting an early game religion in Civilization VI is mostly dictated by two factors. The Civ you're playing as, as well as your environment. So let's say you're trying to get up the world's first religion on a lower difficulty. Or this tutorial should also work if you're just trying to obtain a religion, maybe with a Civ that isn't geared towards a religious boost on deity difficulty. I'm going to talk about some tips and tricks in order for you to rush down and uh, hopefully shave off a few turns so that you can beat the other AIs for your faith sieve. So uh, this is, this is we need to kind of keep in mind our start every single time, you know, like I said in the intro, the environment is a huge factor, almost probably the biggest factor on whether you're going to get up a religion or not. Now this is almost pretty much a perfect start in order for us to, to get the right bonuses up and, uh, and you know, to get the adjacency bonuses for the Holy Site District. We have a mountain range here, so this plain tile will be perfect for three extra faith for a Holy Site District. We have forests around, which are good because, well one, uh, they're, they're, they're good for two reasons. First of all, they could give you an adjacency bonus. Two forests equal one faith for the Holy Site District. But also they're good because you can chop these guys down. You can chop these guys down and you can rush the Holy Site District if you need to, or if you have stone, which we do have stone, you can go after Stonehenge. That is a really important wonder uh, to consider. Maybe not on higher difficulties, but it's definitely possible um, going after Stonehenge. So obviously, in terms of research, we, we've, we've got to go. We've got to go astrology here. You know, astrology first for sure. Um, it, it's just it's just too important. And one of the biggest factors for achieving a early game religion is finding a natural wonder. So if you know what map you're playing on, so like if we're playing on a Pangea or Continents map, even a Fractal map, um, you want to scout first. You want to explore as heavily as possible because shaving off, you know, 50% of this tech is going to be so, so crucial. Now as for exploration when you're going for this early game religion, you're looking for three things. You're looking for that natural wonder, which is number one, the most important thing. I'd say the second most important thing is finding a faith city-state. A faith city-state nearby could offer extra envoys, which obviously could be tremendously helpful for getting up an early pantheon, as well as ruins, which we've been pretty lucky so far. We have a ruin right there. So I just built my first scout and I found a second continent, which is great because that means I boosted the civic of foreign trade. Now why is that important? Now obviously getting astrology as the number one priority right now in terms of either the civic tree or the tech tree, but something else to keep in mind for later down the line is political philosophy. You want to boost craftsmanship, foreign trade, state workforce, and early empire, and obviously political philosophy, so that you can get a government. Now why is that? Because it's very likely that you're going to get up a pantheon, which means you're going to boost this. This civic, which will offer you a policy, which gives you plus two great profit points per turn. So kind of things like this, you know, just kind of keep in mind. I mean, it's, I wouldn't be too concerned with it. You don't need to boost all of this, but you know, inspiring civic texts that lead you to political philosophy could help you down the line for an early game religion. So I've yet to find any natural wonders. And at this point, I'd say if you're playing as a Civ that gets faith bonus, early game faith bonuses, this is where you probably want to kind of gear yourself towards that. So if you're playing as Scythia, she gets a nice tile improvement that provides her extra faith. Or if you're playing as Russia, maybe looking for some of those Tundra tiles for extra faith. You know, all of these things should be considered. Since I'm playing as England, and I chose England for a reason, because this is just a bland sieve that doesn't, well not a bland sieve, but a bland sieve that doesn't get any, you know, bonuses for religion early on. Uh, I'm actually going, with, going to go with another scout, because as I said, so crucial that you look around your environment and, and hope that you have something nearby to help you out with your religion. So we're four turns away from discovering astrology and it looks like we will not be discovering a natural wonder, which is pretty common for the most part. I mean, you gotta be pretty lucky in order to find a natural wonder in your starting continent. Um, but either way, we need to start kind of switching gears. It's still good that we have two scouts and one warrior and also rule of thumb technically is to start sending your warrior back, especially because I am using this tutorial video to play on deity. Uh, so we should probably be sending him back. But again, I wanted to express how important it is to getting up uh, to exploring your starting map. So at this point, what I'm considering is getting out a builder because after astrology, if we're not looking too good, if we, you know, if we really need the extra production to shave off a few turns when building our Holy Site District, and or if we're considering going after the Stonehenge, which the Stonehenge requires an adjacent stone resource, then getting up a builder 
to maybe chop down a few forests to sa sa shave off some of that production time could be a great idea. Now in terms of economic policies, I know it seems like God King is the way to go, but you know, really thinking about it, if you need the extra production, which in this sense we kind of do, in this scenario we definitely do, urban planning isn't a terrible idea either. So I think, what, and you know, obviously switching them too, get going for God King until you have that Pantheon and then switching it to urban planning, that's also, I think, a relevant strategy. So we just finished astrology, it's time to hold production on the builder. Obviously that's not as important in a scenario like this when we're trying to rush a really early game religion and uh, we're going to go with our holy site district. So yeah, this is this is crucial. Uh, I'm glad that I'm getting at least one bonus at this start because so far the three things we were looking for, that was a natural wonder, a faith city state, or ruins that provide extra faith. We all We have not found any of those things. So this is a pretty good example of like Hopefully you guys will able to be able to find that in your scenarios. If not, hopefully, you know, I can show some more tips in order to kind of, you know, shave off a few turns because that's what we're really looking for here. So I just finished the Holy Site District. We're getting nice adjacency bonuses as well as now. We've got Faith going up by four per turn instead of just one because I had one because I had the God King economic policy enacted in my chieftain government. As well as getting up that first holy site district, which obviously you're going to do no matter what if you're going for a religious game, uh, will boost state workforce. And, and again, this is what you're looking for trying to get through to political philosophy as quickly as possible because a pantheon will be coming soon enough and if we need to, we could always enact this policy, you know, to maybe boost us past some of the other civs a little bit sooner. So in terms of production now, uh, we've got to finish our builder because I did just re research mining. So that means I can start to maybe cut down some trees. Uh, not everybody is going to have this stone start. Now it's deity difficulty, it, it's, it's maybe a little bit more likely because the AI is getting down three cities before turn like 20. So they might have stone, but um, it, might be, it might be within reach if we try it. So I am going for Stonehenge here just to kind of see if we can grab it as well as we just got our first Pantheon up. So the Pantheon is really going to, you're, you're really going to have to reflect how well of an environment you are for a religious start. So in this case, you know, I'm not doing so well. Now Divine Spark is probably the best Pantheon you can get if you're in my situation where you, you didn't really get pretty much anything going for you. I'm not a sieve that it gets any religious bonuses early game. Uh, I also didn't find a natural wonder, a faith city state, or any sort of ruins that provide extra faith. So at this point, yeah, plus plus great people points is kind of something that I have to do. There might be things in here that could help my empire a little bit more um, in the long run of things, but if your number one priority is religion, yeah, Divine Spark is the best pantheon to go with. Now as for the race for the first great prophet in this world, I'm okay. I mean, I'm in third place out of the standard eight civs in this game. Uh, it's actually an unmet player and then Arabia that's uh, kind of ahead of me. Arabia is making four great prophet points per turn, whereas me and the other guy are only making two. So this is where interesting things come into play. Uh, so most people go for the Holy Site District. I'm sorry, the, well, obviously the Holy Site District, but I mean the shrine inside of the Holy Site District which isn't a bad idea, plus one great profit points per turn. However, this is a project that I don't see a lot of people using, and it's really, really useful, extremely useful. First of all, it's gonna give us great profit points per turn, and then by the time it's finished, it's gonna give us this huge boost. So let's go ahead and look at that. So let's see what kind of a boost we get when we finish up this Holy Site Prayers project. I'm gonna go to the next turn and then open up this at the same time. And it's, uh, let's see, we're at 12 of 60 at the moment, and then bam, 27 of 60. Now, I realize that there's going to be some things that, you know, you might also have to do. There's there's tons of things you need to work in the very beginning in terms of your, your production queue. Uh, but this is a really, really useful project uh, if, if you need that extra boost to kind of catch up to maybe Arabia or, you know, the unmet player. So what I'm going to do here is I'm about to finish my second Holy Site Prayers, which you can continue to build this project for however long you need to. Um, and I was, you know, you kind of have to make this decision where do you want to build the shrine and then, you know, save the project for later? Um, that's what most people are going to be thinking, but you don't have to do that at all. So what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm focusing on Holy Site Prayers and then I'm just going to purchase the shrine. Bam. And, and then there you go. So we have the shrine and we're going to boost... Our, uh, our great profit points considerably 
and I guess Brazil wants to talk to us right now about the lack of our culture or something like that. So there we go. We've just taken the lead, although, and we're making three great profit points just like this other unmet player. And there we have it. I just discovered the world's second religion on deity difficulty without any of the three things that I asked for. Also getting getting beat out by the Stonehenge. Uh, pretty much this was like worst case scenario, even with a sieve that doesn't get any faith bonuses. And on the highest dif difficulty level, I was still able to achieve the world's second religion. I will have to say that is pretty good start. So I hope that these tips and tricks have, uh, have helped you guys out. Um, in this case, you know, I guess I would have to say you you probably need faith in this scenario uh, don't because I have no faith at all so when when it comes to finding our religion um, I you, you would just you need to uh, there we go Protestantism you would need some sort of extra faith in this scenario because it's just we we're lacking it so bad and if you were I, I'm assuming that if you're trying to rush either the first religion in the world or you're just trying to obtain a religion on deity difficulty uh, yeah I mean a, a, just any sort of faith is pretty crucial so um, you know, I guess in this situation, there's, there's no super big faith things I can get in my founder belief, but probably my follower belief we can, we can get, obviously we have lots and lots of choices in terms of buildings and, and other things like that. So I really hope I was able to provide some tips and tricks for you to either get up an early game religion on a lower difficulty or just get up a religion itself on a higher difficulty like deity. But anyways guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.